Hi everyone, today I am talking with poet and writer Stephen Dunn. We're going to talk a little bit about Facebook because that's something that he is amazing at. So we're going to get into social media, writing, and personal branding for writers, which is which is kind of a contentious issue. So we're, we're going to talk about that and why writers like myself, writers like Stephen struggle with that. Um, so first, Stephen, would you mind introducing yourself to everyone? Yeah, hey everybody, I'm Stephen Dunn. I'm a novelist and a teacher. Um, I teach at Regis University, and I will be teaching at Cornell College, both of their, both of their MFAs, uh, pretty soon. And I have two novels out. Uh, one is Potted Meat, and one is Water and Power. And awesome. I'm from I have to make sure to say that, because I grew up in a poor place as a Black person. And, yeah. <laughs> and you're based in Denver now, right? Yeah, yeah, and I live in Denver now. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's how we know each other uh, from Nairobi University's summer writing program and all of the awesome events and, and things that are surrounding that. Is that where we met? It is where we met initially, but I think we've been connected since then. So, yeah. Oh, it, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember that. That's totally, that's to there are so many people at, the, at those events. Don't, don't even worry about it. Yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So stuff like this happens all of the time. And that's why Facebook can really connect us because Stephen and I have been connected on Facebook for a long time. I feel like we've had some conversations since then. And so that's kind of funny that, um, you know, initially, you know, what, what, what is that kind of initial thing that connects us and um, can really create longer term relationships like that? Yeah. Uh, you never know what it's going to be. So meeting someone once can change a lot for sure. Yeah, I love that actually, like meeting people and then on Facebook. Wow, how long ago is that? <laughs> oh gosh, uh, it's been like six years probably oh. since I was at Naropa, seven maybe? Five, yeah. five to seven? Oh gosh, I can't even remember how long I've been in Louisiana now. That's, that's how long it's been. I was going to ask you that, yeah. <laughs> So I do want to start off by talking about writing and networking because, of course, that's how I found you. That's, that's how we connected. Um, but I'm curious, how did you build up your community on Facebook? You're connected with so many writers there. Yeah, I think it was um, like similar to what you're saying, like being at readings and stuff. And then like people hit me up on Facebook and I hit people up on Facebook. And then it just kind of started spreading like that way, just like so a mixture of like having my body in different places, doing different readings around the country and mm -hmm. then um, just friends of other friends will ask for a friend request. But yeah, that was like the basis of it right there. Yeah. Nice. So, so you did meet people at readings, you did meet people at different events and um, found that, that people would connect with you after that um, pretty naturally, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty nice. Yeah. How long have you had your Facebook? Uh, 2010. It's so funny. My wife makes so much fun of me now because I live on Facebook. But I was, <laughs> I was so against it like for a few years when yeah. like we dated. I think we started dating in like 2006, and then I was talking shit about Facebook until like 2010. You know. And <laughs> so what changed in that? Like what what flipped and made you all of a sudden start kind of liking it? I don't, uh, I think it was the connection with different people. And then, um, like, I'm really connected to my family and friends from back home and stuff. And I wasn't able to go home very often. And I still talk to them on the phone. Like, I'm on the phone a lot, you know, with everybody during the day. <laughs> um, so it started off like that. Like, wow, my family and my cousins are on here. And we used to get to joke around and stuff. So, yeah, that's how it started, yeah. That's interesting. It sounds like your personality in real life as someone who's sociable and wants to talk on the phone and be connected with people is also kind of how you are on Facebook, where, where you really are seeking out those connections and conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I love to play in real life, too. So I, I do count Facebook as my playtime. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I, uh, can I ask why? I don't know. It's So yeah, like I was saying, like with my cousins and friends, like we joke a lot and we just play a lot too. So mm -hmm. like Facebook is my playtime as an adult. You know? I mean, I still play in like my actual life, not online. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I love it. It's like 
jokes and just having fun and just, I don't know, like how we would talk to people in real life. Like, oh, I thought of this thing, you know, and I know somebody else have thought about it before. So like, I'll post a random memory that I thought of from back in the day or something that I think is funny or whatever. So that's really interesting. So it sounds like because you know that someone will probably be curious or interested in that, that same thing that you're thinking, uh, just because of how you interact in real life with people, uh, you're willing to share that on Facebook and see if you get a reaction. And, and I mean, you do all the time. So that's, that's great. Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, so the reason I wanted to have you on the show was because back in January, you shared a post on Facebook that said, I'm going to quote you here. Um, I keep seeing articles and getting spam emails about writers needing to brand themselves, to find their brand, uh, that you struggle with the idea uh, because for you, writing is a human process and brands don't really feel human. I'm curious about that. I'm curious about uh, kind of what prompted that. Um, a, a lot of those things like emails and then mm -hmm workshops and stuff like find your brand find your brand and I do struggle with it because on one hand like I know it's important right um mm -hmm. <laughs> like it has a business thing but like after you read that I'm thinking there like maybe brands can be human also mm -hmm. right um so yeah I'm rethinking my position on that now <laughs> after you read it I was like oh, I said that uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that's, I think that's so common. And, and I mean, just the phrase personal branding, uh, my fiance and I are both writers too. And, um, you know, when I started kind of doing this business and helping people manage their online presence, um, he, he was like, so what you're doing is personal branding. I don't really like that. <laughs> And I was like, well, I mean, you can call it that, but, but in a, in a way it's like really communi communication, it's communication. And he just had this like really specific dislike of the phrase personal brand. And it's not yeah. him alone. It's a lot of academics, it's a lot of writers. It's a lot of people who feel like their work um, is maybe for something greater or for a larger audience that, that just have this, this anxiety when it comes to what, whatever personal branding is um, and what they think of it is. Um, yeah, that's why I say I have to struggle with it too, because I know like it's important and I feel like I'm not doing things as well as I could as far as like advertising or branding myself mm. and everything. So I don't know, you know, something I need to figure out. <laughs> Some, yeah. But I wanted to have you on the, this show specifically because when I think of someone having a, a personal presence, an online presence, um, you're, you're actually a great example that comes to mind because of your community on Facebook, because when you share something, people really respond. That's the kind of thing that writers are looking at, like looking for on every platform. So the fact that you have it on Facebook, um, and, and you still had those feelings of struggling with personal branding um, was really curious for me. So I was like, ah, I gotta, I gotta have him on the show to talk about this. So I'm so glad that you came on. I think I'll, I'm, I don't know a lot too. So maybe like it is personal branding and I don't know what it is. So like, mm. you know, I had a, I had a branding expert on um, who is a professor a while back and she said that personal branding is what people know about you and what people think about you, that uh, everyone has a personal brand, whether, whether they're actively managing it or actively trying for something or not, um, because it's like what comes to mind when you think of your name. I kind of liked that because it did feel more personal than, than, than I think what we think of as, as kind of corporate or company-based branding. Thank you so much for that. That's helpful for me. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. She, yeah. she was awesome. I, I did an interview with her here on The Social Academic. I'll be sure to link to that in the article. Yeah, I want to read that. I mean, yeah, I want to watch that. Yeah. So um, let's see. My next question is kind of about balance, because mm -hmm. one of the things that professors, that writers struggle with is balancing the personal and the professional online. Your Facebook is a great mix of both. So I'm curious, how do you kind of decide what to share or maybe what not to share? Oh boy, this is going to sound bad, but I don't decide. Um. No, that's great. That's such a, that's such a good opinion to have. So you don't yeah. decide and, and tell me more about that. I mean, I, I, of course I like make a choice to post something, but um, I just, I want to be like who I am there. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, like the way I am with my friends and family and stuff. Like, hey, yeah. one time I talk about some book stuff I'm doing. Then I post a lot of pictures of my kid also. <laughs> and a lot of stories about my child. It is some stuff I'm feeling insecure about. Uh, so I just want to like be myself, like as I am there. And I cuss and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know 
some people don't like that, especially like as a professor or whatever, like some people don't do it, but I, you know, I do it. That's what I do in real life and I'll do it online. Hopefully it doesn't hurt any of my jobs or whatever. Um, Have you ever actually, I just, I just uh, released uh, an article today about when, when tweets go wrong and dealing with negative reactions on Twitter specifically. And I mean, I'll just tell you right now, like all of the articles about the people who did have their jobs affected, they said some really shocking things like shocking, like I've never seen on your Facebook wall. So oh. I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But in general, um, I think that what you said about maybe having like less of a filter and wanting to be yourself and um, feeling comfortable with that, like, have you ever gotten negative reactions from that? Like, do, do people message you and be like, don't swear when you post? Yeah, sometimes, yes. Yeah. Some, like some older people sometimes <laughs> don't swear. I get called racist a lot um, against people telling me I'm racist against white people. Mm -hmm. Still figuring that one out. Um, <laughs> so. so you have gotten negative reactions based on what you shared, but it, it doesn't it doesn't change what you share. It you know it's something that yeah. that you see that you that you you know respected that they spent time messaging you, but yeah. you, that you don't necessarily do anything about. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 just, yeah whatever. And I don't. I'm, I am careful. Like I won't post like naked pictures of my kid. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. And um. My wife has a job um, that she can't be too public about, so I don't like post details about her job. So I am like nice. careful about some like personal things that we need to protect for our lives. But as far as like my thoughts about shit, that's say, gonna that's gonna be posted. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Um, and actually, people everywhere love that too because it from what I from what I remember like you've been invited to to read your Facebook posts um in writing classes and such is that right yeah, yeah. and it was really fun I was, <laughs> and I was like making fun of myself too like I was so against Facebook and here I am like reading my post in classes you know and it was kind of like about micro fiction and stuff like mm -hmm. telling stories in a small space uh, <clears throat> Microfiction. Yeah, your posts are definitely like that. I, I find so much storytelling from what you share. Um, and you can really get into, even if you don't know anything about the situation that you're talking about, you can really get into the story because you include so much detail. Um, it, it really is like microfiction. So that's, that's great. Thank you. And I, I think that also comes from like, growing up in like black communities in West Virginia, like always telling each other stories and you know I mean a lot of people have that too right just mm. telling, they might have a bigger meaning they might not they might just be something stupid and silly and that's fine too yeah for sure but not everyone's sharing it on Facebook and I think that that's what that that's what really sets you apart um is that when you share it like people are really engaging with what you share they're they're commenting on it um in ways that show not only that that they've read it uh but that they've thought about it as well so I think that that's really interesting thank you and you know what about like being uh, honest about stuff like I, I used to be kind of embarrassed when I would see people in real life they're like your Facebook is so good and I'm like oh I would be embarrassed so like if this conversation would have happened a year or something ago I would have been really embarrassed and I had to figure out like why am I embarrassed by that you know I don't know and I think maybe it came from like me like being judgy before Facebook so still like kind of carrying that stuff over myself like maybe I post too much maybe I do this you know I've, I've had all of those thoughts but yeah I don't know. <laughs> I get that. I, I've had those thoughts myself. I mean, I was completely private on social media until just about two and a half years ago, three years ago. Um, and then I like created a Twitter and I started, you know, opening my accounts to be more public. Um, and it was a really big change for me. My comfort level with like what I was sharing, how much I was going to share changed pretty significantly. Um, so our feelings about, you know, sharing and being on Facebook and um, being more public in general definitely change over time. No, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's because my account is private too, but I have a lot of friends, but I also feel like, okay, like I've let these people into this space mm -hmm. so I can still be myself. And sometimes like not everybody I let in are great. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think I feel more comfortable in that sense because I also don't post much on Twitter and mm -hmm. uh, what's the other one? Instagram. Yeah, I don't, I, get, I check them like every few weeks and stuff and I miss all types of stuff and I feel bad about it sometimes. Well, I mean, you're spending so much time on Facebook and I, my recommendation is always spend time where you enjoy. Is oh. So is Facebook your favorite social media platform? Yeah, yep. Yeah. My daughter says it's for old black people. 
I was like, all right. She's 18, but she's been saying that for like three or four years. Like, fix burgers for old black people. I'm like, all right. Like, I think you might be right a little bit. <laughs> That's funny that, that your daughter said that to you. <laughs> she, she refuses to get on Facebook, you know. No. She, she does Instagram and the other, whatever she has. But, yeah. You know. So you do have Instagram, you do have Twitter. You don't really use them that much, it sounds like. No, yeah, I, I use Instagram more than Twitter, but mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, Twitter is like, I don't know, I haven't figured it out <laughs> yet. It's, Twitter is really fast moving. Um, and I feel like there's not enough time for people necessarily to see your post to get into those conversations that you yeah. enjoy on Facebook. So it makes sense that Twitter might not be your top top favorite yeah, platform. Yeah, no, like, no person like to take time and stuff and <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually did want to ask you more about that because when you when you do post people people do respond um, and they do comment and they do start conversations with you. Do you like get notifications all day? What's what's that like? Oh, I don't get any notifications for anything. You turn off your notifications. I do, except for text messages. I would like I'll get to the rest of the stuff when I do. <laughs> But because I'm on there, like, I'll see the notifications when I get them, you know, and then I'll respond and stuff. And usually, like, I'm on Facebook at the time so I can respond and things. But sometimes it takes me a while to respond. But, yeah, I I don't have notifications for anything, not even email. I'm like, you know, I'll check it when I do. (laughs) Oh, I think that's great. And also, since you're on Facebook so much already, having notifications to have you get on more is probably not a good idea. So I think that that, that's probably really smart. And I love that you you don't have any notifications, not even for email. That's that's a healthy approach. Mm -hmm. Um, So thanks for sharing that. All right. So my next question is, what advice do you have for writers or other people who want to find those conversations or find the kind of community that you have on Facebook? I think uh, just being engaged. Like I comment, like the way people comment on my posts and stuff, like mm-hmm. I'm on other people's posts and talking and just, you know, commenting and stuff is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, I had some great connections come out of Facebook and just from engaging with people, um, like-minded people and just being sincere, like how do you be in real life? Yeah. So it sounds like Facebook is kind of the place where you go to have conversations, where you go to be yourself and share your personal thoughts and have conversations about those things with other people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also to like learn, because there's so many interesting people <clears throat> saying and doing things and so many teachers like sharing their syllabuses and people with books coming out. And I'm just like, wow, Facebook has just been great. I've found so many new authors and teachers and hey, I found you too. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's, that's really important information because so many people think that they have to join Twitter for that. So many people think that the only place to find the new information or, you know, new um, conversations is Twitter because that's where, quote, all the academics are or all the writers are. Um, And I don't think that that's true when you spend time kind of cultivating that community like you have on Facebook. Um, And again, just for anyone who's listening, it sounds like um, Stephen connected with people at events. He connected with writers that he met, um, even some friends of friends. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Yep. So there are ways to build your community on Facebook and engage in those kind of enlightening conversations. Okay. Are, are there a lot of academics on Twitter? Like you mentioned? There are. Um, academic Twitter, hashtag academic Twitter has gotten really big. Um, but again, I think that there's a lot of people on there who don't necessarily know what to do with the platform um, and are trying to find connections, trying to find network, um, but not necessarily knowing how to go about that. So I think that's a, that, that's a pretty common issue for academics. Um, people are told, you have to join academic Twitter, you know, and then they get there and they're like, what do I do? Yeah, man, <clears throat> I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, <laughs> so, so like my ignorance is great sometimes. <laughs> But then other times it's not because I miss out on stuff, but also, you know, it keeps me sane sometimes because I just don't know yeah. about it. <laughs> well, your Facebook's going great. I can totally understand why Twitter has not been a priority for you for sure. So I'd love to talk more about your books. Uh, tell me more about, you know, writing and um, what it's like, especially now during kind of coronavirus to, to be a writer, to, to find connections online. 
Oh man, it's been crazy actually. I've been tired of it. Um, <laughs> I get so many friend re requests every single day. So I was like, man, are people bored? I don't know which is possible, <laughs> right? But it was starting to get out of hand. So I had I had to delete like 200 friend requests from Facebook. I was like, you know, I just, I just yeah. can't. Um, and I feel bad about it. I was like, some of those people might be great, but I was getting like 10 a day for like a whole month, you know? Um, so that aspect of like, my email is being flooded with um, re with also the racial things going along mm. on the coronavirus. So, so it's been a lot of like protecting my space, but also still like reaching out to the people I care about. Um, and I, I've been writing because I appreciate the slowness of the world right now. I know it's terrible, so I'm not saying like it's great, but because it is like since it's here, I do appreciate the slowness. Mm. And I, I'm able to write. Um, and I'm making things, I'm working on a book where I'm building models, so I'm doing Ooh. things with my hands. Um, Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I'm writing a book about a musician, Van Hunt, and I I can't figure out how to write about the humor in his albums, mm. so I represent it visually by like building like <laughs> models of like little cities or buildings. Ooh. I kind of put different things in there to represent the humor. So like I've had space to think and dream enough to do that. So yeah, it's been pretty decent. Yeah. How about how about you? How's your writing been in? Oh, I feel like I have not done very much creative writing, to be okay. honest. Um, I have felt kind of lost. <laughs> I've been inside for so long. I just yeah. I just like don't don't really know um I, I think where where I am in space right now and that's kind of affecting my writing. Uh but at the same time I appreciate that I have more time to kind of work on my business and um really really focus on writing better articles for the social academic blog and helping more people that way. Um oh. so being able to put my energy in there and really focus yeah. I really enjoyed that. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. I mean, not like, I mean, I like that you're saying like the creative side has been a struggle because you don't mm -hmm. know where you are in space, mm -hmm. but you can still work on the business aspect. Does that, does that like kind of ground you in a way? The business it does. Part? It does because I'm, I feel like I'm always talking with new people, especially in new fields um, and learning new things. And so I'm always engaged, uh, which is really nice. But every time I sit down to write a poem, to write something creatively, I, I definitely feel myself kind of lost. Um, and every time I do write something, I'm not happy with how it is in, in relation to how I'm feeling. Like it, it feels kind of detached from myself. So I, I've not been writing that much. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, that's, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Mm. Have you done any virtual reading? I know like virtual readings have all of a sudden become really big since coronavirus started. Have you done any of those? Yeah, I did one last night. Ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I read uh, Washington Un for Washington University in St. Louis. Um, it was really good. Yeah, it was really nice. They, uh, they were teaching my books there, like three different professors are teaching my books. And so it was really cool to do the reading. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of those readings and they're strange, <laughs> uh, very weird. Cause I'm what? such an in-person person, person mm. um, to like do readings on, um, yeah, like I, I time, like not time, but like when people laugh, you know, like know when to come out of the lab when you're doing a reading and all of this like physical things that happens. And then after the reading, you know, there's like a, a gradual exit from the reading, but mm. on Zoom it's like, all right, reading's done. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's such a such a different experience. Uh, I've, I've worked a lot of readings and, um, you know, as an assistant to a lot of different writers at those kinds of events. And um, there's always so much time kind of before that, that, that you can set up and you can chat with, you know, people. And then afterwards, that that is more conversational, I think, um, that sometimes is missing in, in virtual readings. Uh, so that's interesting that that the audience is like a really big part of that for you and being able to see their reactions and hear their reactions yeah. um, felt felt like there's maybe something missing. Yeah, yeah, and it's mm -hmm. yeah, big. And I, it's because I also do stand-up comedy um, yeah. for practice. I don't want to be like a real stand-up comedian, but I only do it like practice for my readings and stuff. Wow, that's great. Yeah, because I feel, I feel like I have to give something different as a comedian that you don't always have to give when you're just going up to do a reading. But I, I want to, like, bring those same elements that I have to give into readings and stuff. And um, so that is also, like, 
kind of crowd dependent too, like very, per I mean, audience dependent mm -hmm. on how things go. So I'm missing a lot of that in a way. Yeah. Yeah. So many virtual readings, like they don't even necessarily have the people who are viewing you on the screen. So you, you might not even get facial expressions sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, so tell me about your books. You have two books, uh, Potted Meat and Water and Power. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Uh, let's see. Okay. So Potted Meat is about, um, I grew up in West Virginia. So I wrote about like childhood <clears throat> in West Virginia, childhood and adolescence and just what that is and poverty and as blackness in like a white state, but a very black town. So all of those things are kind of in there. Um, like, drinking and like managing all of those things just growing up in there um and then water and power is about the military i was in the navy for 10 years hmm. but um also didn't just want to like write about my own military experience because that's my problem with military literature is that it's like a very singular voice hmm. um like whether it's anti-military or pro-military it's always singular and there's like a hero so I wanted to write a book that incorporated a lot of different voices in it. So I interviewed a lot of people, but I still call it a novel because most people wanted to be anonymous. So mm -hmm. a novel is a person writing <laughs> about the military. So it's like a fictional ethnography. Interesting. Know. Yeah. That must have been um, a fun project to work on talking with so many people. Maybe well, fun's the wrong word, but engaging. Yeah, I mean, it was, parts of it was fun, too. Just, you know, like, connecting is fun, you know? Even yeah. if sometimes you connect with some terrible shit, it can be a fun connection, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, there you go. That's, like, another social... My, like, my book is a social thing, too, right? I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't even connect that to, um, yeah. And then all the books that I'm working on now are collaborations, too. So I'm working on four different books and they're all collaborations. So. Four at the same time. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, which is really weird because I was always like a one book person. Like I'm going to write one book and I'll write the next book. But <laughs> it changed like at uh, January of 2020, it changed. And all of a sudden I have like four books that I'm doing and it's collaborations and it's really nice. Yeah. It's fascinating how much that's changed for you and um, just kind of like being open to change and uh, how you write or how you how you approach writing is that's really interesting to me. Hmm. What about do you have books also? No, I don't have any books. <laughs> um, I finished my MFA at Naropa and uh, went into an English English literature uh, master's program. Um, so I was really focused on criticism. I'm proud of my peer reviewed articles. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, no poetry books yet. I'm actually, I, I do have a manuscript that I think is ready. Um, but the more time I spend with it, the more I, I want to release it on my own as kind of a digital multimedia project. Um, so I'm thinking about creating a website for it and uh, releasing that in a couple of years as as like a media project instead of as a book. Okay, well, it's if there's a, anything I can do to help, I don't know what I can, but if there's anything I can do, like, please let me know. Well, I'll keep you updated. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when I get started on it. And I am so excited to hear that you're working on so many collaborations that it sounds like your writing is, uh, you know, kind of similar to your, to your social media, to your personal life, that you want to be in conversation with people. Um, so thank you so much for sharing all of those things. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, I was just wanting to like talk about you, but <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't want to do that, that's fine. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about me more, but since this interview was about you, um, I think we'll wrap it up here. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will be sure to link to your books down below. All right. <laughs>